Hey guys, how are you going? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create accordions or collapsible content using plain HTML, CSS, and of course, JavaScript. So basically, this right here is going to be the final result. If I was to click on this button, we can see here the content below expands down with a nice transition. So basically, I'm going to be showing you two ways to do this. The first way with the animation and the second way with no animation. Um, and personally, the no animation version is the more robust solution, but I'm going to be showing you both ways anyway, and you can of course decide that for yourself. So let's go inside this document right here. It's a plain and empty HTML document. So let's go inside the text editor and we have this right here. So let's begin on the HTML for the accordion itself. So. Let's go down here and we can say a new div with a class of accordion. So essentially, this div is going to be the main container for the accordion itself. Inside here, we can have two elements, the button and the actual content. So we can say button with a type of button and a class of accordion underscore underscore button. For the text, we can simply say expand content just like this. So um, with the class name, I'm using the, um, the block element modifier, BEM uh, CSS naming convention, but you can of course name these classes with uh, whatever you like. And also I'm using the actual button tag for this because we're using the correct element for its purpose. It's a button, so let's use a button tag if that makes sense. So um, for the content, we can make this a div with a class of accordion underscore underscore content. Inside here, we can place a paragraph tag and put some dummy text inside here. So uh, this is the HTML for the accordion all done. Pretty simple and straightforward. So I'm going to save this and refresh the browser and we have this result right here. So now let's move on to the CSS to of course style up um, the actual button and of course the content itself. So. Let's go back inside here and head to the CSS and we can target firstly the accordion underscore underscore button class. So for this, we can display this as being a block. We can make the width at 100%. The padding at 15px will do just fine. And a border of none along with an outline of none once again and a cursor of pointer. For the background, we can simply say background at um, we can just say triple threes for a dark gray and a text color of white. Alrighty. And a text align of left because of course um, buttons are going to center your text by default. And we can say transition for the background at 0.2 seconds. So basically of course um, when the button gets, uh, gets clicked on we want the background to change to a lighter shade of gray. So of course this transition is going to make that animated. Okay, so I'm going to save this now and refresh once again. And we have this result right here looking pretty good so far. So next step is going to be um, putting the little triangle um, character on the right side to of course signify collapsed or non-collapsed content. So uh, back inside here, this will be done using a CSS pseudo um, element. So we can say right here, accordion button uh, after. So colon, colon, after. For those of you who don't know, this is going to create a CSS virtual element, basically. Um, the content inside this element is going to be um, backslash 25BE. And this right here is the hexadecimal uh, representation or reference for um, the Unicode, uh, sorry, uh, the Unicode down triangle. So essentially, this is going to be translated to the actual down triangle character. We can then say float to the right side, of course, and a transform on the scale at 1.5. So it's going to make it 50% 50, uh, 50 bigger than its default size. So I'm going to save this now and refresh once again. We can see right here, this has uh, been outputted successfully. Okay, cool. Um, so the way it's going to work with the active and, uh, you know, the actual button getting uh, pressed on, we're going to be adding a class to the button, which signifies it is active. So the JavaScript is going to add a class or an active class to the button itself on click. So 
um, that class or that active state is going to not only change the background color to a lighter shade of gray and change um, the character here, it's also going to uh, hide or show the content right here. So let's go back inside here and define that class. So it's going to be called accordion button dash dash active. For this, we can set the background to be uh, triple fives, that is a lighter shade of gray, and um, we can say for the after pseudo element, we can simply change the content to be um, the up triangle equivalent. So we can say content right here at being backslash 25b4, and that is the uppercase, or sorry, um, the upper direction equivalent of the triangle. So now I'm going to save this and refresh one more time or once again. And now I'm going to manually add um, the accordion button dash dash active class. So I can just go inside here and say dash dash active and uh, press enter. And now we can see the background changes to a lighter shade of gray. And of course, this character changes. So essentially, the JavaScript on click is going to be adding this class automatically for us. Okay, cool. So back to normal, we can now work on the actual content itself. And that is going to be the main chunk of this video. So back to the CSS, let's target um, the class of accordion underscore underscore content. So firstly, overflow of hidden and a max height of zero. So basically, uh, these two properties right here um, is like the main thing about making these accordions. And that is that you're able to hide the content, but you're also able to actually animate the height when um, the accordion gets expanded. So I'm going to save this real quick. I'm going to refresh and we can see the content is now gone. Cool. So back inside here, let's add a transition of max height at 0.2 seconds. So essentially the JavaScript is going to be setting the max height when that gets set to its um, correct value, it is going to, of course, uh, transition the max height right here after 0.2 seconds. So I'll demonstrate this right now. I'm going to save this and refresh uh, once again. Go down here, select the accordion content element. Then I'm going to manually change the max height as if the JavaScript would. So I'll say here, max height at something like 100 px. Press enter and we can see here, we get the transition on the max height right there. So the JavaScript is going to be doing basically this right here. So pretty simple. Okay, cool. So let's go back inside here. And um, that is the main chunk for the uh, for the mechanics of the accordion. So now we can add the aesthetics. So we can say padding right here of 0 and 15 px. The reason for the 0 is because um, the actual paragraph tag is going to add the margin for top and bottom anyway. So basically top, bottom 0 and 15 px for the left and right. A font family of sans serif will do just fine and a background of a lighter shade of grey, triple E's. So I'm going to save this now and refresh once again and just add the actual uh, max height here. So I can just say max height, something like 150px and we have this right here. So of course, um, the grey background and of course just the um, the padding on the on left and right side. Okay, cool. So now we can work on the JavaScript to, of course, automatically um, set that max height and change the active um, state of the actual button. So let's go back inside here and we can scroll down to the JavaScript section and we can simply say document.query selector all. We can select all of the elements with the class of accordion underscore underscore button. We can then say for each, so for each button, we are going to do this right here. We're going to say button dot add event listener. We're going to listen for the click event. So when the button gets clicked on, we're going to do a few things. Firstly, we're going to actually get a reference to the content itself relative to the button that was clicked on. So we can say const accordion content is equal to button dot next element sibling. So essentially this property right here is going to give you the next 
element that is the sibling of this button right here. In this case, it's going to be, of course, the accordion content. Okay, cool. Then we can say button dot class list dot toggle accordion underscore underscore button dash dash active. So basically, this will toggle the active state on the button. If it does not exist, it's going to add the active state. If it is there, it is going to remove it. Okay. And finally, we can say if button dot class list dot contains accordion underscore underscore button dash dash active. So essentially, um, once hold on one sec. Um, yeah. So so once it has been toggled, if the state is active, then we have to set the max height on the content. So we can say accordion content dot style dot max height is equal to accordion content dot scroll height plus px. So essentially, this right here is going to give the um, it's it's going to give you the integer value for the actual um, the amount of pixels that the content would take up if it was displaying normally in the browser window. So basically, it's going to give you the height of the contents. Then we're simply saying append the px characters to the end of that um, value. Okay. Then we can say else. If we are essentially not showing the content, then we can say accordion content dot style dot max height. We're going to reset this back to be zero. Okay, and that is all for the JavaScript, and we are pretty much done. So I'm going to save this and refresh once again. Click on the button, and we can see here it expands just fine. We get the um, the background change, we get the character change, and of course, uh, most importantly, we get the content displaying with the animation. And we can see here that the max height is set to 108 pixels, and of course, that 108 right there comes from the scroll height property I spoke about earlier. Okay, but there is one problem with this solution, and that is if I was to um, uh, just resize the window here, we can see that the height remains at 108 px. So, without some sort of uh, resize event to, of course, change each accordion um, and reset the max height. This is going to look a bit funny when the user resizes down, but they can of course just click on this and press it again to fix that problem. But you know, it's up to you if you want to use this method or not. So that's why I'm going to be showing you um, the second way, and that is the same thing without the actual um, animation, and that is the more robust way, which will not have this problem um, right here. So. For that way, we're going to change just a couple of things. So let's go back inside here. Firstly, we're going to remove all of this stuff right here um, on the accordion content. So we can just simply for now, we can just comment out all of this stuff right here. This is all about the animation. So um, for the uh, no animation version, we can set the display of the accordion content to be none by default. We can then set the overflow of auto. So basically, um, this auto here is going to um, ensure that you don't get um, the margin top space between the button and the content itself. Okay, cool. And then uh, we can simply say um, for the accordion button active um, class, we can say right here um, plus accordion um, content um, display as block. So essentially. Um, this plus here is going to, um, it's, it's very similar to the next element sibling. It's going to select the accordion content uh, next to the button and set the display of block when it has the active class. Okay, so essentially we're sort of moving um, the chunk of the um, showing of the content to the CSS side instead of the JavaScript. Okay, then simply all the JavaScript needs to do is it needs to just um, toggle the, act, um, the active class. So we can simply then comment out all of this stuff and comment out this stuff. And now it's only going to, of course, uh, toggle the actual class. So now it's going to work just fine. So I'm going to save this right here and refresh once again. Click on this button and we can see it now expands. We still get the animation on the background, of course, but we don't get the animation for the actual content. But this is going to work when you resize down. It won't have that problem right there of the height. So it's the more robust, more solid solution, which you probably want to use for your production or client-facing websites. Okay, 
and that is how you can create accordions or collapsible content using plain HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.